Let's look at an example of a reciprocity law in the case of a quadratic polynomial. Let's take fx to be x squared minus q, where q is a prime. Now a reciprocity law should give us a condition for a prime p to lie in split f. So when does this f split over p? Observe that that happens only if this polynomial has a root over p. This means in particular that f splits over p if and only if q is congruent to a square mod p, so that this has a solution. Great, so we have a reciprocity law. But wait, this law is practically useless. Why is that? Well, let's say I want to find split f for fx equal to x squared minus 3. Now, how would I go about finding this according to this rule? Well, I would have to go through each prime p one by one, and then check whether or not q is a square mod p. That is like infinitely many conditions to check. This is really not good at all. So ideally, we would like to replace this condition with some condition modulo q. Because whereas there are infinitely many values of p to check, our q was fixed. And there is indeed a way to turn this condition mod p to a condition modulo q. This is done via the so-called quadratic reciprocity. For convenience, let us introduce a new notation, the Legendre symbol. We define it to be 1 if q is congruent to a square mod p and minus 1 otherwise. Then in that case, the problem of rephrasing this condition in terms of a condition mod q could be changed into finding a relation between these two Legendre symbols. And that's what Gauss quadratic reciprocity gave us. It says that these symbols are going to be equal if 1 of p or q is congruent to 1 mod 4, and they're going to have opposite sign if p and q are both congruent to 3 mod 4. Let's see how we can use this to determine the set of split f. Let's work out an example. Let's take q to be 5. Let us now try to find all the prime p such that f split over p, i.e. the prime p such that 5 is a square mod p. Now observe that 5 is congruent to 1 mod 4, so then by quadratic reciprocity, we have that 5 is a square mod p, if and only if p is a square mod 5. Oh, and finding the square mod 5 is so easy. Half of the element in z mod 5z will be square, and so they are going to be 1 and 4. Thus we see that the set split f could be given by a congruence condition modulo 5. And more generally, if q is congruent to 1 mod 4, then split f can be given by a congruence condition, modulo q. Now, what about if q is 3 mod 4? Let's work out an example. Let's say q is 7. As before, we know that f split over p if and only if 7 is the square mod p. Now we want to use quadratic reciprocity to switch this to a condition modulo 7. This now is a little bit more complicated because we also need to know residue of p modulo 4. So let's break it down into two cases. When p is congruent to 1 mod 4, then by quadratic reciprocity, p is a square mod q if and only if q is a square mod p. So that means that this condition here is equivalent to p being a square modulo 7. Now if p is congruent to 3 mod 4, then by quadratic reciprocity, q is a square mod p if and only if p is not a square mod q. So the condition here will be equal to p is not congruent to a square mod 7. And we do know the square and non-square modulo 7. The squares are just 1, 2, 4, and the non-square are 3, 5, 6. Now, it's kind of inconvenient to have a bunch of conditions like this, so maybe we want to combine the condition modulo 4 and modulo 7 into just one modulus, modulo 28. And we can do that by Chinese remainder theorem. We can translate this condition into this condition modulo 28 and this condition into this condition modulo 28. And now we can just combine them into one condition, modulo 28. Now, let's summarize the rule for finding split f. When q is congruent to 1 mod 4, then the set of primes that f split over can be given by a single congruence condition modulo q. On the other hand, when q is congruent to 3 mod 4, then split f will be given by some congruence condition modulo 4q. And that is how we find split f in the case when f is a quadratic polynomial. We can say that a reciprocity law in that case would just be given by a congruence condition either modulo q or modulo 4q.